Hi, my name is Abhishek and in this video I'm going to discuss dynamic programming. Now for those of you who are thinking what dynamic programming is, dynamic programming is a method for solving complex problems by breaking them into simpler sub-problems. Some also refer to it as smart recursion or intelligent brute force. Well dynamic programming is like building a wall brick by brick where each brick is a sub-problem and the complex problem is building the wall. Well, the cool thing about dynamic programming is, is that we do not repeat our sub-problems. We memorize their results for later use. We'll see how this works later. Now there are many ways to actually implement a dynamic program solution. The most common one being recursion plus memorization approach, which is exactly what we are going to discuss in this video. The first step to write a dynamic program solution is to find the subproblems. Finding subproblems is the most important part of any dynamic program solution. The next step is to write a recursive solution such that each call to the function complete one subproblem. And next we have the trickier part, memoization. Memoization is to show the results of each subproblem to be used later whenever the same sub-problems occurs again. For example, let's say we want to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Fibonacci numbers, let Fn denote the nth Fibonacci number. Then, by definition, Fn is equal to Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2. And F of 1 is equal to F of 2 is equal to 1 which makes f of 3 equal to 2, f of 4, 3, f of 5, 5, and so on. Our task here is simple. Given our integer n, we have to calculate the nth Fibonacci number, or in our notation, f of n. Let's first work upon the subproblems. As we can see from by the definition, to calculate f of n, we first need to find fn minus 1 and fn minus 2. Thus, one can say that to calculate the complex problem of solving fn, one first needs to work upon the simpler subproblems of calculation of fn minus 1 and fn minus 2. The idea involved here is to chop down the complex problem of finding f of n into a summation of elementary problem, that is, f of 1 and f of 2. Now let's start by writing our recursive function. So int f int n where n is our parameter. Now if n is less than 2 return 1. As we by definition we have f of 1 is equal to f of 2 is equal to 1. Else return f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So this completes our recursive function. As you can see it is by definition f of n is equals to f n minus 1 plus f n minus 2. Now let's take a look at the function call tree. Let's assume we have to find f of 6. So to find f of 6, we first need to find f of 5 and f of 4. In turn to find f of 5, we need to find f4 and f3. In turn to find f4, we need to find f3 and f2. In to find f3, we go down to finding f2 and f1. So as we can see, all the tree, all the branches of tree are ending with the determinal cases of f1 and f2. So we are building the complex problem of finding f of 6 from the elementary subproblem of f1 and f2. As it is evident from the tree that a function works alright, but we are totally forgetting the memorization part. If we look closely, we can see that we are calculating the same subproblems again and again. Now let's edit our recursive function to include memorization. 
first we create a cache and initialize it with minus one minus one will indicate that we haven't found the nth the nth fibonacci number yet and we are about to do just that the terminal condition will remain same however if cache of n is not equal to minus 1 that is we have already found this sub problem then we just return its results from cache else we store the value of this sub problem into the cache and then return it let's take a look at our function tree again now when our programs encounter the same sub problem again it doesn't initiate any more function calls which changes our solution from exponential to linear time complexity so dynamic programming is real cool right but what if the sub problems weren't overlapping will this approach be efficient then well if each sub problem is unique then there will be no point in memoization memoization only works if we have the same sub problem again if we do not have any overlapping sub problems then there will be no point in memoization hence this this approach will not be efficient then so those are the things we need to keep in mind before thinking about a dynamic programming approach to a particular problem. Thanks for watching. Bye.